Oh, hi. Uh, so, uh, before we begin, I have to uh, write out uh, something that uh, I think needs to be said. Uh, but th there's a challenge with it. I can only use one word, so here it is. Uh-huh. Uh, did you get that? Good, because I didn't want to say it out loud. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just way too lazy. So, let's talk about the movie. Okay, so I kind of recommend going blind into this movie, but I don't know really how to talk about the movie without giving away any major spoilers or details. So, right off the bat, if you have any interest in this movie, just look up the trailer. It was pretty vague about what this film was about, and I think you'll know what it's about. So, if you already know what this film was about because you saw the trailer, read the premise online s somewhere else, you may have already seen the movie, you just want to hear my opinion on it, or none of the above, I, I don't care. Just one last time, you know, um... Spoilers. Oh, wait, I just said I was too lazy to say spoilers out loud. Well, I'm a hypocrite, so clearly my review doesn't matter. But, yeah, you know, I guess I should just talk, start talking, actually. Um. Okay, good. Sebastian Stan plays a Campbell. I mean, I'm glad to get that off my chest. It was eating me, but at least the bad taste of my mouth went away. And Many bad food jokes later. I did kind of figure out what this film was about, sort of, based on the original poster and a few hints in the trailer, so of course I was excited for this movie. It was it was originally released at Sundance earlier this year before Searchlight Pictures acquired the distribution rights and released domestically on Hulu the same weekend as The Batman, so I'm sure everyone's going to be talking about this movie more. Jokes aside, though, I really did want to see this movie since there are a lot of possibilities with this price, and I'm not an expert on cannibals in cinema. I No, how can I call myself a fan of cinema, then? But I do know some of them, like the Sawyer family from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 1974. And he the most famous character in movie history. Those who haven't seen the movie know who he is. Hannibal Lecter. And I will make comparisons later on. I think. Uh, I'm clearly all saying this off the top of my head, not reading something in front of me. Anyways, the movie is directed by Mimi Crave. And her first feature, ran by Lauren Kahn who was Adam McKay's assistant, but later became a writer for the Netflix original movie from 2018, Abyssa. What? Am I the only one who doesn't know about this movie even existing either? Khan also wrote and directed a few funnier die shorts, which sadly makes too much sense. I'll get more into this uh, now, actually, I guess, because with all that said, what's the movie about? The movie follows Noah, uh, played by Daisy Edgar Jones, a young woman who wishes to find a decent man since her tastes she meets online don't give her the most respect. But a lot of that changes when she meets Steve, played by Sebastian Stan, at a grocery store where the two really hit it off and start dating for a bit. Although Noah's best friend, who she provides everything to, Molly, played by Jonica T. Gibbs, I think that's how you like pronounce her name, warns her that Steve could be shady due to the lack of some info she doesn't know about, but Noah really truly believes this could be something. She even agrees to go with Steve on vacation, but of course, it's not what she thinks it is. Now, horror film. The movie's first 33 minutes are technically a prologue, since for the first 33 minutes of the movie, Noah and Steve play charismatic and relatable characters that feel natural enough, but once the plot gets going, then a, little, uh, t then a tile card occurs, since I guess that's when the real movie starts. Noah ends up being kidnapped and drugged by Steve in his remote home in the woods, where he reveals her who he really is. He's a butcher for human meat, a cannibal who kidnaps lonely women like her to make food out of, or at least cut off their body parts to sell it to the uh, one percent of the one percent, as the movie calls it, who are part of this community. That I will pretend that isn't something possible that could be real in you know real life. <laughs> Anyways, Steve holds Noah hostage in his dungeon where she talks through Ben's seat of her cell to another woman named Penny, played by Andrea Begg, who's trying to uh, hold on to her sanity while Noah knows she must do everything to try to survive. As Molly sets out to find Noah, Noah must figure out how to get Steve to keep her alive or else risk becoming his next meal. I think this is a great premise. I mean, sure, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is literally about a bunch of crazy people kidnapping, trespassing teens, and making them human food, but Steve is a wildly different character from Leatherface or the other characters. Easily the best part of the movie is Sebastian Stan as Steve, who plays such a sick and demented character, I'm not sure if he's insane or just plain creepy for knowing what he's doing and enjoying it. He really sells this character as someone who has done something as grotesque as this many, many times, yet plays it like this is environment is completely normal for him. The movie has a great dark humor in that sense. He listens and sings along to many songs as he cooks up humor meat, where it's slightly amusing yet creepy at the same time, which makes for good dark humor. Too bad this isn't consistent. 
The movie honestly didn't really take full advantage of this press. And I don't want to criticize the movie just for not being what I personally want it to be. But the per but the choices the movie makes in between a story and characters dumbfound me a bit. The movie kind of goes exactly the direction I thought it would go, and despite an R rating, it holds back on truly being scary when this could be one of the best horror films of the year. The movie does a good job at times making the unknown all the more suspenseful and terrifying. But when the story gets going, it kind of gets in the way considering the situation. Guy had a spoiler word so I could get more in depth about this. Basically, a lot of characters make dumb choices. And I'm not talking about how they got into the situation. I mean, there is technically a 33 man prologue on developing Noah as a character who isn't dumb but is naive enough to fall for someone who seems to be as perfect as Steve, who seems to write a amount of nice and charming. I, I get that. But then the movie shows her stuck in his dungeon trying to escape. Honestly, it shouldn't have been this difficult for her to escape. Like, first she gets Steve to take him to the shower, and then she tries to run away so he cuts her ass off. That's not a joke. So she realizes she needs to play a different strategy escape. She tries to pretend like she's still into Steve, which at first I almost thought maybe Steve was aware of, that she was doing this and only let her think she was going to mess with her even more. But now he falls for it, despite him probably being smart enough to see through it. In fact, in her room there was a face, and I thought she could just grab it and, you know, bang his head over with it. It says she is chained to the floor first, but she's not later on. I, I don't know why, but she could have whacked him easily. I know in the horror films, characters make dumb choices, but when it tries to play, you know, in reality or realistic enough in some sense, the characters need to be set up more properly for it to work. So I know if they are smart enough or dumb enough for the choices to make, especially with Molly. She is the character who figures out her friends in trouble, and despite her being smart enough to warn Noah constantly about Steve, before things get ugly, she makes a miraculously dumb choice when she tries to save her friend. Okay, this movie is something I want to love, especially the way it's directed, where the more the film goes on, the more it feels like madness, but not done well enough. I said earlier they try to use the unknown to be scary, so we don't actually see him chop anyone's arms or legs off. He uh, uses surgery to attach a few things, which makes sense, I guess. I, I really don't know how I could, you know, I could do surgery to attach a few... Okay, well, uh, anyways, I don't know, actually, now I think about it, I guess, actually, seeing that out loud, that, that shouldn't make any lick of sense, you know, I mean, it's, it's insane, but anyways... As much as Sebastian Stan does give it his all to make this character creepy, I feel like the movie is held back by two things, which is the characters making obvious dumb choices and not taking true advantage of his premise. Uh, and plus a minor issue of being tone deaf. So I guess that would be three. I get ba I'll get back to the characters making dumb choices later, or at least making pointless choices uh, for the story later on, but I should start talking about other things. Or One issue I have is the direction this movie goes in, where it feels like a standard horror suspense thriller, when it could be a psychological horror thriller, which not every horror film has to be, but with this risk, I think it should be. Noah has to pretend to play it cool so she can get Steve's trust, but think of how much it could be more demented or scary if he wanted to make her like him, trick her earlier to eating human meat without her knowing it, because he does feed her human meat, but imagine she did prior to knowing that meat was human. That would be nuts. What if he started her, and her only source of food was human meat? This character, Jones, does a brilliant job playing this character who plays someone who is trying to act normal when she should be going bonkers underneath, but then it leaves important info that feels missing. Like, I don't know what her job is, so maybe she was an actress in this movie uh, that could show her knowing how to play the part, but th that's a minor thing I'm willing to ignore. Yes, though, there are more problems. The movie is uh, kind of tone deaf since it's supposed to be both creepy and amusing at the same time how Steve is in the zone uh, being a butcher of human meat. But around the third act, characters make one liners are easily out of place and kind of ruin the atmosphere. Like Penny says to Noah and Molly, You two are so cute. You two are so cute together. Or Molly telling Noah that Steve was married this whole time or ending the movie uh, being a callback to the jerk she went on earlier that day in the first place with him texting her. Time to talk about the ending. So Molly gets kidnapped, but Noah is able to escape Steve by doing something so hilarious. It was kind of worth watching this movie to get there. But once Noah, Molly, and Penny are able to knock out Steve, they don't kill him. Uh, they just run away despite that, that being the prime opportunity to kill, kill Steve. But once Noah, Molly, and Penny are able to knock out Steve, they don't kill him. They just run away despite that being the prime opportunity uh, for them to kill Steve. Instead, the movie goes on for... Uh, 10 to 20 minutes way too long where he chases them in the woods only for then is when they kill him But the movie's not done. They set up a character who's supposed to come to rescue them who does one thing in the movie earlier That is essential, but then they set him up to do another thing only once he arrives at the remote location He just leaves and it has no impact. So I don't know why his scenes weren't cut 
If the movie ended with the woman escaping with this guy in his car and getting out only for Steve's actual life to come in and maybe giving this movie a stark ironic ending of Steve's course being uh, used as human meat, I give it my respect. But instead the wife tries to kill Noah, but she and Molly defeat her, which leads to the joke on the phone, which was a real awkward place to end on. Like, the majority of this film's problems are in its third act. I really do want to love this movie. There's so much done right, but there's more to talk about for me what does wrong than what does right. The acting is great. The atmosphere, for the most part, is suspenseful. The end cinematography really captured the madness on screen, but the story just needed another rewrite in my opinion. For what it is though, and not what I want it to be, but it's still good. But I know this could have been great. I know for what I talked about where some scenes were misses, there are still great scenes worth watching, and I can say it was worth watching it for those scenes. This is still a really good movie. I was enjoying it, and despite how negative I sound, I probably do recommend it. But I honestly think I like No Exit more, where that movie wasn't perfect, but was consistently entertaining and suspenseful, and this movie isn't that. This movie honestly doesn't try hard enough to be scary or insane as I think the makers probably thought it was, but maybe I'm just being cynical. I mean, this will be something I won't forget soon. I do love the acting, but I know when a movie is just good, I know I'll think to myself, it could have been great. But then again, I guess not every meal eaten will taste the same way it looks. That's honestly the best way I can sum up this movie. On the surface, the meal looks great, but taste is only a little bit more than good enough. Not bad, only a bit underwhelmed in the end. I'm not an expert on food puns. I give Fresh a 7.5 out of 10.